Thanks, Sam. Uh, welcome, everyone, to today's presentation. Where we're going to talk about network and Internet security best practices. To start out with, what do we really mean by network security? What does it all entail? Well, Wikipedia, which we all know is the source of all knowledge, defines it as the provisions made in an underlying computer network infrastructure, policies adopted by the network administrator protect the network and the network, accessibility resources from unauthorized access, and consistent and continuous monitoring and measurement of its effectiveness or lack of that is all combined together. Now, while the previous definition seems to be fairly widely accepted, we also seem to define network security as information security, or we at least use the terms synonymously. Network security basically equaling information security. And it really doesn't matter if we're talking about that non-public personal information of our customers or members, you know, any type of information, corporate information, employee information, and that com com customer and that member information. So we're going to just continue to move along here. Actually, I'm going to um, try to flip through some of these fairly quickly, so we will have some time halfway through the presentation for some questions and then at the end as well. Now, if you are the network administrator, you're very well aware that there are a lot of, of risk and threats out there and, if nothing else, just basic challenges that you have to deal with in keeping the network up and running and making sure that the information and the systems are kept secure. Obviously, there are some issues with information security that have nothing to do with technology, but they do have to do with physical security and those employees, our trusted insiders. But for today's webinar, can't really cover all of these areas in great detail or really to, to give all of them the total justice that they deserve and then still have some time for some discussion on the solutions and controls and hopefully have some time for some questions. So I'm going to try to keep the focus primarily on just a few of these network or Internet types of issues and not going to get real techy, but we may get into um, a little bit of a technical discussion. I want to start with the malware. Malware is software that's designed to infiltrate or to damage a computer or that computer system and generally without the owner's knowledge. You don't always know that this is going on in the background. Specifically, talking about Trojans. Trojans can basically do anything that the user who is executing the program or the hacker, the criminal that's, that's executing the program, wants it to do. And the Trojan can also give that person the same rights and privileges as the user whose system that they've hacked into. So this would mean they could have access for deleting files, you know, anything that I as the user can do, delete, transmit, the hacker now has the privileges to be able to do that. They can read, they can change the files, they can modify, they could even install other programs. They could change authorities if this was, say, an administrator account. They could change users' authorities and give other users more privilege than what they actually have. Uh, the Trojan can exploit the vulnerabilities that exist in the systems, the ones that they've um, intruded into. They can install other viruses. They can install other Trojans. And like I said, if it's an administrator user that the system is, that's been compromised, then they have access to the operating system. The Trojan can do anything that an administrator can do. The Unix root account, if you're the network administrator, you're familiar with what root accounts mean. Um, if you're the network administrator, um, any of those kinds of accounts, even a single user account, if you have the administrator access to the operating system, now the hacker has that access. When we talk about key loggers, 
Key loggers are programs that run in the background, and they record all the keystrokes. So once keystrokes are logged, they're basically hidden within the machine so that the hacker can come back later and retrieve them. Or they might actually, as they're being typed in, they're collected, and then they're being transmitted out to the hacker at that point in time. What a hacker is going to do then is they're going to go through all of that information. They're going to look for passwords. Obviously, that's the, the key thing they're looking for are login credentials for specific systems. But there's also other possible information that can help them compromise the systems or use in social engineering attacks. So they may be going through the contents of emails or letters that have been composed by the users. Because remember, this is a key logging program. It logs the keystrokes on the keyboard. It's not looking just for specific formats. It's logging all of the keystrokes. These key log programs are commonly included in what are called root kits and RATs, or remote administration trojans. A spyware, spyware, the malicious code that collects personal information about users. So we know that there are issues with spyware as well. Now, system outages. I mean, these typically are probably what you deal with more frequently, um, and especially more frequently from power types of issues, the storms, you know, the electricity goes off, construction work is taking place, and so they knock out the power or knock out the Internet. There's work going on, the street crews are digging up the street, and they knock out you know, cabling. So we lose electrical power, we lose the Internet, you know, those types of things. But there's also issues that are caused by, you know, denial of service attacks and the malware that we were just talking about. So what I want to do on this next slide is I want to talk a little bit about denial of service attacks. They've been around a while, but it's kind of interesting that we've just been more recently that they've really popped up on the scene, and there's been a lot more information out there, a lot more articles about them in the last several months. So what is a denial of service or a distributed denial of service attack? Well, generally, it consists of the efforts of could be one or more people, and if it's more people, it's typically because it's part of a botnet where the computers, there's a whole army of computers, and they've all been programmed to initiate these types of attacks. And the goal is to temporarily or really indefinitely interrupt or suspend the services of the host or the computers that it is that they're trying to um, flood with information. They'll target sites or services that are hosted like banks, credit card payment companies, um, DNS servers or name servers that are out there. So what they're, they do is they'll typically send repeated messages. They're constantly sending information messages to servers or to a specific targeted server. And they continue these, and they just keep drilling away, just message after message after message, in an effort to basically overload it. And it just says, I can't handle this. It's too much information, um, TMI, and it, it will shut down. A lot of times they'll, they're trying to hit the servers and then eventually trying to hit firewalls so that they can get the firewalls to shut off so that then they can sneak in behind those devices and get into the internal network. Now I want to show you just the next couple of slides. We're going to continue to talk about the denial of service attacks. But these are from some specific articles. Um, a security expert at Arbert Networks stated that these attacks have been trying to take out bank websites quite frequently, and especially since the beginning of the year, and many of them the small to mid-sized financial institutions. So it's not just the large city banks and Capital Ones and Bank of America. It's that they're, they're actually targeting many of the smaller community and regional type and sized institutions. They say that some of the attacks are launched by Dirt Jumper, which is a specific malware, or a rest kill specific botnet. 
Now, the dirt jumper, according to this particular article...